That was close. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> thanks for the... Uh, thanks for the patience. It's just fiddling up with, like, the music and stuff. Um, hopefully the link... For the link change? I'm not sure, but... Ideally, things should be... Things should be fine. <laughs> Thanks guys for coming. I'll turn down the music a little bit. Hopefully you guys can hear me a bit better. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry for the wait. Um <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming. Um I'll just try to get started quickly so that we don't have to drag this on too long but you know did you know we're not just an art channel we're an online art school as well we have weekly live classes limited to 10 to 12 students for the best learning experience we give feedback feedback cycles personal critiques you can submit your artwork and our team will look at it um, and give you advice um, and we'll you know where our amazing amazing teachers will keep you accountable and cheer you on um, you can also become a patron for around $2 a month. And uh, you can also get some early access to our videos, director's cuts, and uh, working files from our streams if you sign up. So make sure you do that if you are interested. And yeah, <laughs> thanks again for all of your patience, for being you know, very supportive in my time of need. It seems like, you know, it's, I don't know, technology, man. It's amazing, but it's a bane. But yeah, okay, so today we have kind of an interesting, um, yeah, technology is amazing when it works. When it's not, it just like, I just sit here very jittery. Um, but today we're going to be doing something kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, winter scene. We're going to be drawing an environment this time, an outdoor environment, which can be really difficult. Um, I think outdoor environments can be even more difficult than like interiors sometimes because at least like with interiors, you kind of have like, it's like the cheat for like interiors are just having like you can kind of put everything into like a box, I guess. While with exteriors, it's like, you know, you have like a room with like an interior and like everything will kind of happen here. But then like, if it's like an outdoor thing, it's like, what the heck do you do? So uh, this is going to be a little bit interesting. Feel free to ask questions or draw along or whatever, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I think the poll said um, that it would be like everyone voted for like a forest scene, which is fantastic that you guys would all make me draw trees. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess we'll just give that a try. So I am using Clip Studio Paint. Um, it might look funky just because of the way I have arranged it, but yeah. And, but, yeah, so if you guys have questions about the tools as well, feel free to ask. I am using the, uh, tool, pro like, the shape tool, line tools, to just do, like, a little, like, sketch first of our, like, environment. Um, I do think it's quite, it's easier to draw environments when you have, like, a sort of thumbnail to... Like, if you make a bunch of thumbnails to, like, help you figure out what you want to do. But, in our case, we're gonna wing it a little bit, so we'll just have to see. <laughs> yeah, I was really surprised that everybody wanted to draw forests. Like, wintry, like... Like a wintry forest scene. I would have figured that everybody would want to draw, like... Uh, in like a some sort of like interior or like something like that uh, but you know 
you guys, it's your choice. I guess people who live in this know are sick of being inside. <laughs> yeah, for real. It just snowed like where I am too, so like when I look outside, it's blinding. So the first thing we want to do when we approach any sort of environment is to figure out where the horizon line is going to be. Um, the horizon line, uh, also called the eye level, is basically where the sky meets, uh, meets the ground. And in interiors, this can be pretty tricky because, um, you know, you're inside a house and that's like so you won't actually be able to see the horizon line but for sometimes so you'll have to like kind of intuit where it is but for us we can kind of figure out like as a, as like a sort of um exterior we like we can kind of look anywhere and then just see it most of the time i think you'll probably see like something like this i guess where you'll see like some sort of like sunset and then like the sea or something and then like an island or something and like you know that line where the sky meets the ocean is the like horizon line or the eye level uh, call it whatever is easiest for you and yeah does this work for traditional um yes although i will note that you might, when you're, if you're going to draw this traditionally, you might want to draw a little bit smaller because the horizon line um, can, for better, for best results, I think it's the horizon line should be like could, will probably go off the page like, you know, like a lot, and then we can't really draw that. So, um, just try to draw a little bit smaller than uh, you might want to, than you would normally do. Oh, by the way, I want to say that I got into an art school and I couldn't have done it without you, your helpful videos. Thanks! Um, I'll tell everybody else. Glad to be of service. And with, I, we would be happy to hear your experiences in the art school. If you are, you know, if you want to share them. Congrats! So for this, I'm going to draw like the horizon line. Probably I'm going to put a low horizon line because and just generally keep it like around something like this. And I'm putting it kind of lower than it would be. Uh, so like if this was like the middle of the page I'm putting it in like the bottom half because a lower horizon line makes your image look a bit more dynamic. Um, so, lower, and a simple, it's basic, it's kind of a simple composition trick, uh, composition trick to keep your horizon line a bit lower. Um, you can also do the same by like, just like putting your horizon line super like off the page at the top as well, but this is just something for us. We'll see how this goes. Usually what I like, this is like kind of your choice, but I like to put kind of a grid just to like remember like where the ground is. You do, this is optional, but you may find it helpful or it may like, I think it's also like possible to like be, to get a little bit confusing. Um, if it's not something you're used to. So that is optional, but here we go. We're starting with the horizon line. It is good to have your... Oh, is the music still loud? Uh, let me s try to fix that. That help a little at all? It is good to have. Let me know if that helped. Uh, but it is good to have reference as well. So if you have reference, 
feel free to sort of use that. <laughs> so for a forest scene, so this is going to be where horizon line um, is. This kind of means that our character, if we, ha if this was like the point of view of a character in this image, it would be kind of low. Um, for the ground, you can kind of put it. Uh, however, like way you want, really. You just have to remember that, um, like where the horizon line is, where your grid is. That's kind of the ground plane that your camera or character is on. Um, these, this sort of bump that I'm putting over it is like a hill, sort of. So it kind of goes, like lies on top of it, sort of. Kind of like, like so, kind of like that. And then like because but because it's snowy, there's probably going to be a lot of like you know, there's going to be snow on top of the ground, so it's going to be raised up a little bit. So you can kind of like, uh. You can guess like how things are going to be kind of bumpy, I guess. Um, and you can compose it as you see fit as well. Oh snap, been on the wrong layer. But yeah. So you can go lower, you can go higher, etc. But it is, you know. We'll try to be a little bit simple. Hello, Sleepy Rose. <laughs> oh, and good luck on your animation project. And then... One thing I like to do is... How am I gonna do this? Um, start with putting in like the trees. I'm just like, so the sketch is gonna be probably be a little funky, but... We'll see how it goes. So it's winter. I feel like uh, because in the area I live in, there's going to be a lot of evergreen. So I'm going to put a lot of like evergreen looking trees. And I know these look a lot like toys right now, but you know, this is just the sketch. Uh, this is generally just going to be like where, <laughs> like how it kind of, I'm trying to like put in the shapes and stuff. So you can also start like that as well. Um, you'll notice that I am like putting this sort of cone shape to show that like, like you know just to push the perspective a little bit more because uh, we are like these trees are over over the horizon line so we'll be able to see underneath them and then that's kind of what I mean by making you know just adding perspective to your scene and making it a bit more dynamic. Uh, because it's going to be like, I guess, a forest of evergreen trees, they can be like, these can be as tall or as like, you know, as tall or as like, as small as you wish, really. Um, it'll get smaller as things are in the background. Because like, it is a forest of evergreens, I think I'm just gonna like, like this little thing you can do is just add like, all like the forest blending together in the background just so you don't have to deal with the uh you know with like the individual trees and stuff too much and then i think i might want to add like a sort of uh mountain And then, like, we can always add in, like, some of the foreground elements later. I'll go over, like, foreground, midground, uh, those things, and as well. If I want to add, like, this mountain here, just to show, like, you know, something super far away, and then, I don't know, maybe, like, oh, I've been, like, thinking about God of War recently, so I'm just like, maybe there's a dragon up here, I don't know. Or like a serpent. <laughs> but I can also add that like later, so we'll see.
And then I guess because it's like pretty empty over here, I will probably add something like a character. Maybe there's like as like a foreground element. There's like just some like character hiding from <laughs> the serpent or something. Something like that. We'll see how it goes. You can fiddle around with it as well. So, I know this looks kind of like strange, but that's okay because that's just our sketch. Gonna lower the opacity. And then draw in some of our trees. So when we're drawing in like evergreen trees, it's a little bit uh it's a little bit easier for evergreens because if you observe them, they're not really like even though their overall shape is like that, they're more like if we like draw them like super simply, they're kind of like a bunch of cones stacked together like so, right? Like as you get more detailed. And that's kind of really all you need to know because um, what evergreens really are, they're like a stick and then <laughs> like a tree, right? And then their leaves are just like, they poke out in like that sort of like shape, like that skirt shape. So that's basically um, what you, <laughs> that's basically all you need to know. So when you go back and you're drawing them, um, it's up to you to like sort of decide how you want to design these shapes. Um, a lot of people choose different, like, they choose different ways to do it, but um, so, you know, this is where, like, you can get your sort of personal creativity. And, you know, sometimes, like, some of the proportions we might have to fix a little bit, so, let's see. Like the tops are probably not going to be as uh, pointy, I guess. But because there's like snow, you can also sort of. You have like this blanket, like a blanket of uh, snow, like on top of these trees. So the top part can be like kind of not as detailed since there's like snow kind of resting on it. And then so you can focus on like just making like the bottom full of like detail, the leaves and stuff. Then the top can just be like this sort of uh like if I had to draw it out <laughs> very roughly, like so. Because snow doesn't have a lot of, like, the, it's very, like, flat and puffy, so it'd be something like so. Snow, leaves. So that's kind of, like, where you're going to be um, distributing the detail. And I find, like, drawing leaves and snow and nature scenes are really difficult myself, so I feel like this is also pretty rough. Uh, a rough showing for you guys, but you know, leaves are hard to draw. What can I say? And then like this is going to be like kind of the, the trunk of the tree because as you know, the leaves are just kind of like these sort of shapes that are kind of hanging off the tree. So you can come up with some like interesting shapes for that as well. Thanks! Hi, 
Amina. Thanks for coming. And then I always think the fun part is that you can always... Uh, there will be like parts of the tree that you can see through, which you might be like, oh no, but it, I think it actually makes like the tree look a little bit more real. I haven't done like enough tree studies to be honest, so I probably like it would probably do me good <laughs> to do more of them as well. Then I would probably make them look a little bit more more like varied. Like so. And then we have like this sort of ground area. The snow is very smooth, so you, there's not actually a lot of shading or anything you need to do uh, for that either. But when we do get to the shading, hopefully we'll get to it. Um, you'll see that it's pretty fun as well. And then we have like our tree. You can always make it a little bit bigger. And if you really want to like, you know, um, <laughs> kind of cut corners, you can also, after you draw your tree, you can like duplicate them and then sort of like, you know, warp them around if you like really want, you know. And then change up some of them, flip them around. just to like make things, you know, go a little faster. If I had to um, sort of like do these in like, if I had more time, then I probably would, I probably would draw them out a little bit more. But since I do not, you know, do what we gotta do. <laughs> um, so yeah, and you can always go in and like sort of draw in some variations so it doesn't look too uniform. Maybe change up the, the trees sh like leaf sh uh, a little bit, the shape of the trunk. Try to just kind of think of trees as like, and their leaves as like layers. The composition I could probably make a bit bigger. I do kind of want to keep more of this stuff in. So maybe something like so. Congrats on finishing uh, a background. Backgrounds are pretty hard. So, you know, being able to do it, it at all, I think, is very commendable. For like these sorts of 
backgrounds for like forests and stuff is that as things get farther into the background you don't have to like you can sort of draw like less detail so you don't have to like go and like make sure every individual thing is inside is like drawn anymore that's like the fun part personally <laughs> for me doing all these like fun shapes and depending on like the type of thing you want to do uh, the amount of stuff you add in the background is also up to you as well So as you can see, the snow itself is actually not uh, that present in like the actual drawing. I feel like, well, we'll get once we get to coloring. I feel like that's when you would see more of it. But yeah, you know. Yeah. Sorry if this looks like really interesting at the moment. Um, hopefully we'll be able to clean up some of it before time is up. Just trying to pay attention for like how the snow should be lying on like all these uh how it would be laying on top of these trees. <laughs> and like, you know, the good thing is the farther you get back, you don't actually have to draw that many, like, you don't have to worry about separating the, like, the snow and like the leaves anymore since uh, you can just sort of imagine like, for example, if trees in the front kind of like so, You draw trees like this, and then you draw like your snowy sort of layer on top of them. Pretend that this looks really good. And then as things go farther in the background, you can kind of make things just look fluffier. You can actually probably do this in like um, in the in like the foreground as well, if you really want, it just like this is just means like there's been lo a lot more snow than like this one. Does that make sense? Let's look a little bit. Yeah. So like you know, and if like you really want, you can add like maybe. A little bit of like leaves at the bottom sticking out but this is like basically you know lots of snow some snow so it's kind of your decision Hello. So then, this sketch. Okay. Might move, make this a little bit smaller or thinner. I feel like this happens a lot where I'll start drawing something and then it just ends up being like be different <laughs> compositionally.
then something I like to do for everything is to usually just add some sort of um, foreground element. Usually, like, it just means like some sort of like leaf or something. Since we are like in this sort of forest area. Like adding like some sort of leaf and then sort of puff of snow on top. Although, I should make it look more creepy. might be easier if I like pulled out a reference of a branch or something. So. Hopefully this looks kind of like green leaves or something. Uh, although I might want to make it a little bit thinner maybe? Play with the amount of snow is on something. Maybe just like a branch of something, even. just like a very rough approximation of things. I don't 
don't want to cover up the tree a little like too much, so I'm gonna knock some of this back. Something like this. And hopefully if I fill this in a little bit so we can get like a sort of idea of how like the values are gonna look. It'll, like make a little bit more sense. Why are the bigger parts of the tree higher? Um, bigger parts as in like the stuff I'm filling out with gray. The, oh, like the gray parts? So it's because the um, they aren't actually higher from the, from like the tree that the tree from the trees in like the background. It's just because of the perspective, like because our horizon line. Um, let's see, did I turn it off? It was so low over here. Like this is our horizon line because it's so low. That that just means that ev that we're kind of looking up at things a bit more. So. Like these things, the gray things are, they look kind of funky, but they're like basically like branches or leaves or trees that are just closer to the uh, camera or like the character whose point of view this is. Um, I feel like, like no one ever really told me this, but like, which is why I think perspective was so difficult um, for me to understand. Um, and it's still difficult, I think, is because like uh, when you're like putting together backgrounds and stuff, you kind of have to pay attention, like you have to consider how this picture is being taken. So instead of like just thinking of it as like a picture of like, you know, like a background is a picture um, like that you draw, you should try thinking of like it as a picture that you take, like with a camera. Um, and like, try to th and like that's basically how your perspective works basically um this whole like if it is like if this is easier for you to understand because for me it was a bit confusing but the horizon line like this thing um people call it the eye line but you can also consider it the camera like uh eye line as well so for this like picture so for this picture, the point of view would be like either <laughs> either somebody is like on the ground sort of like really low to the ground and they're like looking up at like these trees and stuff. Or like, you know, if it's like difficult to imagine like it as a character, you can think of it as like a camera instead. Like so. Even if you have a character in this, like, in your image, so for example, if I had, like, some person here, you have to assume, like, the, the picture itself is, like, the point of view from, like, another camera. Yeah, like a dog looking at the world. And that's basically, like, I think that's, like, a good approach to, like, understanding how, a, like, when you're drawing backgrounds, what you're supposed to do. Because um, it was hard for me to understand. <laughs> like, you know, I just drew backgrounds because at some point, people just like are like, you have to know, you have to know how to draw backgrounds, and it's like, uh, so I can't like get away with not knowing anymore. So like, I was forced to do this. I was forced to unwillingly <laughs> draw backgrounds. So yeah, so that's just kind of. How it is sometimes. 
these ones. Uh, the gray things are also in what I would call the foreground. And the foreground is basically in every single like background ever that you'll ever draw. There's going to be like a sort of, for example, a background. And like, I don't know, people, the midground. And then usually a foreground. So like, for example, a tree. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense a little bit. Let's fill this in a bit more, maybe. I'll just take away the mountains because I think it'd be more confusing, but basically... FG... And then the background. So just think of it as like three layers. And this is just basically a pretty good like um, formula, I guess, of uh, like just approaching how to even start on drawing a background. Adding like all this stuff will just give it a lot more perspective, a lot more um, dynamicism, cinematography, all those good words. So, yeah. Alright, and then... So we have our foreground. That's my sketch. And here's just like some trees. then kind of want to do like some sort of mountain really far away in the background And then maybe there's like, we'll see if this guy makes it in. Maybe there's like some, <laughs> some dragon guy. And like, you can, hopefully it like comes through, but this guy's like a really big dragon. If he's gonna be on like a mountain. But this might actually, call, like, I don't know. I might keep him, I might not. I feel like it might complicate image so um. maybe mountains enough dragons are really hard to draw I feel like I always have to do a lot of like work for it and then let's see so 
Let's see if I can put in some of the like the midtone. I guess I have my midtone in like my uh, canvas already, so might be a little bit rough. As things go farther into the background, they just get lighter, ideally at least. And then I guess as like a sort of thing you can do to like add atmosphere is to like add like the sort of like in your, between your after your like midground like you can add this sort of like gradient to like uh to like show like more atmosphere basically although just because like I have like a gray background, I think it's not working as well. Whoops. Something like I think I'd have to cover like the line art as well. So something like And yeah, because like the snow is dragging everything down, the branches are sagging as well, or something like, or you know, trying to do that, something like that. But we'll see. That's like in the coloring stage. Just try to put together this thing first. I'm sorry you have to go through that, Amber. That really sucks. Don't be discouraged though. We all start somewhere and honestly, I don't think... I think people are just being mean when like they insult art because like... I feel like art is so subjective already. Okay, like, I don't know. I feel like people- I don't think non-artists really understand art at all. Not like, no offense, <laughs> I guess. I feel like they just don't really get it. Like, they don't get what goes into making it, how it's made, how people make it, um, what it's used for. Like, I think a lot of like non-artists just sort of think like that we just sit and twiddle our thumbs and like imagine art that just sort of appears and then like i guess like and then when they think of art they probably just think of like paint or something like that which is like fine and all but um 
like obviously if uh, you can like show your work to people who aren't artists and then they can like understand what's going on that's like really important but I think when it comes to like certain technical things I'm not sure <laughs> if it's a good idea to listen too much ultimately you know you should draw because you like it I think and that it's fun to a certain extent um and like, you know, you shouldn't listen to when people are say things about it. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't trying to be serious. I was just like, I was like ruminating, I guess. Just like thinking about things. Yeah, like it's a it's weird. I feel like it like just like with the age of the internet, there's also a lot of like uns unsolicited critique. Like, you know, you could just like I could just be drawing like, you know, my faves kissing or something and then people will be like, "Why does it look like that?" And it's like this is my playground. This is my house. <laughs> like, if I Obviously, like critique is important but like when you're just like fooling around it doesn't really matter I think hello see you tomorrow hopefully I should probably stop talking about things though and like just think, talk about um, trees and snow. So snow can be like <laughs> pudding. Yeah, pretty much. Just trying to think of snow as like a, a blo like pudding, basically like masses of just blobs resting on top of like leaves. Like we have our leaves here. And then our snow. I actually feel like my these these aren't like very cohesive, so I'll just try and go at it again. snow overlaps um, in order to show like I guess the depth of objects in a space you can remember to show like your overlaps and the snow itself does not have to be like very form like sticking to the forms of the leaves 
they are like layers of just like like blocks over them so you don't have to worry too much about how things might look even with something like say a branch usually they have like a thinner like layer so you can kind of like like icing you know like just think of like some sort of coating Maybe like some snow has fallen off. Stuff like that. I think I do want to like sort of edit my <laughs> trees a little so. We'll also do that. it might be nice to sort of think of the snow as like kind of like this sort of shape and then the leaves as like more rugged like a scarf I guess It all depends on how you want to like design the shapes, to be honest. There's like a bunch of ways you can do this. And all can have really nice effects. Then I gotta work with the ground. For the ground, for like snowy grounds, uh, you don't have to worry about it too much. Just gotta draw like a vague line of where the snow, of where the ground is, um, and then we can think about that a little bit later. Good night, see you tomorrow.
clips. Are you guys interested in drawing backgrounds? I feel like um, it is like a commonly quested video topic and I'm curious if people would like what kinds of things people would want to know more about um, drawing background and things. Oh. Hello, peaceful. Do you really, Amber? That's pretty cool. I feel like I always like the only reason I ever draw backgrounds is out of like necessity. Characters deserve nice rooms. Right? <laughs> I feel like the difficulty with for me for drawing like trees is to like make it look like I actually drew them and not that I just like scribbled them. <laughs> just like haphazardly although I don't know how well it works like more traditional work so much but these days I don't have a lot of time or I'm too anxious <laughs> to about my time to like sit down and properly like draw something some snow. Where do you reckon that anxiety comes from? <laughs> People in work. Yeah. That sounds like it. I think I'm just an anxious person in general, sadly. I see you thing.
want to do this. Um, maybe something. Just draw the, the trees. Fine to turn the paper. Um, sometimes you know that the angle of something you're drawing is just, you know, it's just easier on your hand to fit, like draw it in a certain position. Autodesk has really nice drawing, um, like a really nice brush engine, I think that's what it's called. Use Autodesk on your phone? I think people use IBIS, right? People use Procreate these days. think looking at like the files of artists are interesting like a finished piece or something do you think that's like I guess like I guess the, the roundabout thing I'm asking is like what sorts of things do you guys feel like would be uh, good like rewards for like a patreon or things like that I'm just curious as well if like there's just things that people might want that we haven't been offering. Like we have videos, we have working files. Can you do a video about water backgrounds? Water backgrounds? Like underwater? Personal art critique. Yeah, that actually is a pretty good idea. We do that, we do offer those for paid courses. Um, Maybe like for less like specific things. Underwater is a pretty good idea. We can take a look at that. 
Um, we generally offer like early access to videos, director's cuts, and working files. Uh, we do have virtual classes where we do have like feedback stuff, but hmm, maybe patrons, like higher tier patrons could probably get that too. That might be something to look into. Do you think, do guys think like brush files or like wallpapers are interesting? Is, are the, is that what people, the people look like those things these nowadays? Ooh, random doodles. That is fun. I always got random doodles. Brush files. All right. keep these in mind. If you have if you guys have more suggestions, feel free to like request them, I suppose. Anything from like maybe specific um, streamers that you might like to see? Like, there's like something a specific um, specific art piece, or like maybe specific things that they do. Because I know, like, I think Josh is an animator, so maybe animations and then Iggy does his illustrations um, Jesse has like her comic although I don't know how uh, this is just like my speculation they might want to keep their stuff more separate but I don't know like, is that stuff you guys would be like, are you guys curious about that? Is that like, that sort of thing like tickle your fancy? I'm a nosy person, so like with all the like the Patreons that I kind of subscribe to, I do really enjoy seeing like their process work and their personal work, like my favorite artists OCs and all that stuff. The things they get up to cat photos even, you know. Suggestions for certain upcoming live streams and videos. We actually already have that in our Discord for like free, I think. So go on and, you know, feel free to request if you are ever in the Discord.
let's see. Have you guys gone over reference pages yet for OCs and stuff? Um, oh, like turnarounds? I don't think we have. Um, that's a good idea. Oh, that's actually a really, really fun... That's really fun, actually. A really fun topic. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. I will pass it along. Sure, that's like useful for anyone who wants like to do character design for like their portfolio and stuff too. Sure. Bye, Julian. How would footprints work in the snow? Um, so, snow is basically like, think of it as icing, I guess, or like a layer of something on top of the ground. So the snow itself isn't the ground. Um, it's like, it is water, basically. So when you step into the ground, depending on how deep the snow is, you would like sink into it, right? So you would have like, I guess, holes. Uh, depending on like I guess and like frankly like when you do step in the snow I don't think like it has unless it's very thin snow like if it's really deep snow I don't think the footprints are gonna be that recognizable as foot like footprints they just look like holes you know something like that and you can probably fill them in if you want like just to add like sort of that like to to measure how like it depends on like how deep the snow you like you want it to be so like if it's like really deep there'll be like holes and then you can like add like the sort of like uh the disturbance of like you know what we what happens when we're walking through snow around it and like the pile like the pile up like so like this is a very rough um <laughs> sort of like Thing. And we would drag. We also drag our feet a lot, so it wouldn't be. They wouldn't be like perfect circles either. It'd be kind of like messy, you know. Um, unless it's like really thin snow, and then you could probably like put in like the actual like foot, like the shoe, like that, um, <laughs> something like that. So you can kind of see like these look pretty like. The depth looks pretty different. So, yeah. That's how you do it. I don't think I'll be able to color this in time, but... Um, I appreciate you guys for coming along the ride anyways. I'll try to finish, like, it within the day at least or like within the hour one thing I want to note before like we do end up going though is like 
I'd probably make the shadows on the top a bit sharper. Like so. Animal snouts. That's cute, yeah. Do we have, like, our stream schedule public? at all, Daria? Like, can, uh, can like people besides us see it? Oh, okay. Like, does it show, like, who's streaming? Do people remember? <laughs> I think everybody probably knows when Jesse streams. I know I'm like on a really irregular schedule. No surprises, hopefully. Oh, I see. Oh, no matter. Animals. <laughs> I see. Castles, actually, or like, I like attempting to draw the insides of castles, uh, but they're really hard, so I feel like I don't finish them very often. Drawing buildings would be a great idea. Yeah, I think so too. I think we have one. I'll probably go over like five minutes or so since I was like late five minutes. Technically, you can imagine this snow stuff as like ice cream or, or pudding.
snow pudding is basically the same, right? Buildings that aren't boxes are difficult. Like rooftops and stuff? Buildings are pretty difficult. There's like a lot of um, construction to them that I don't think we think about when we're like, when we're not looking at them. Like the image in our head about the images in like our minds about what buildings look like, I feel like are actually really different from what they actually look like. A lot of details to them. left like so many little spots yeah Thanks for asking questions. And thanks for showing up. drawing tablets. Would you guys be interested in like reviews for drawing tablets? Like on our channel in general? Reviewing art products or something? Would that is that useful? <laughs> Thank 
because a lot of us have different tablets that we could probably talk about. I know like Wacom is probably like the big thing that everybody is like thinking about, but I think there are a lot of like really good cheaper alternatives. Just the best for what they're good at would be nice. Yeah, like to the point. So maybe they'll be like shorter videos. surprised. Okay. Thanks for coming to the stream, everyone. I'm probably going to end it in a little bit. But I really appreciate you guys coming out, <laughs> asking questions, giving us requests and stuff. Feel free to stick around and keep requesting things if you see fit. appreciate your guys' um, patience as well with all my like technical difficulties constantly. <sighs> One day my computer will be decent. I'm not sure if you cover traditional art, but I didn't learn how to shade until color pencils. We actually just released a color pencil video, so you're in luck. And um, it is now, yeah. It used to be like you could purchase it as a one-time thing, but now it is subscription. They have it. Um, if you already bought the like one-time subscription before 2023 you still have it and you don't have to pay to use it but if you want to pay if you want updates you have to pay so it's like ugh. very annoying And if you guys are interested in like buying Clip Studio, I would recommend you get it on your iPad instead of like on the PC. Um, if you have an iPad, because I think it's like it's an, it'll be portable, and it's a real it's a really close port. So unless you need your PC for drawing, um, just get it on your iPad. I think it's the better deal. But otherwise, there's a, there are plenty of other things you could use for it. Uh, use for like other art programs to use, is what I mean.
going to end stream now. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate all the questions. And I'll see you guys later. I think our next one is Friday. So tune in for that. Have a nice day. Feel free to leave like a comment below if you have any more like suggestions on like what you might like to see, topics, things for like rewards and stuff. Don't be a stranger. Oh, <laughs> thanks for reminding me. This one? <laughs> thanks for reminding me, guys. Oh, crap. Sure. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Have a nice day, guys.